a class, um, I decided to record this video on Scientology. Um, I wasn't raised religious at all, and I think that's why I decided to take this class, is just because I don't, I don't know anything about religion, and I really wanted to. Um, I've always kind of heard about Scientology, and all I really know is, oh my god, crazy people are running around everywhere. Um, but I didn't, I don't actually know what it was. I had never really like put my energy into studying it. Um, but I saw it on that list and I was like, that is my topic. Um, so I did a lot of research and I read a lot of things and I looked into it and I watched quite a few documentaries and I will, um, I will give you all the names in my works cited page um, because they're great documentaries and I seriously recommend watching the one that I saw on HBO called Going Clear. Um, but I'm going to start from the very beginning and that would be the person who I guess came up with Scientology, um, who was Ron L. Hubbard. He was an author. He actually held the Guinness World World Record of the most books published, and his thing was fiction and science fiction. He actually had over a thousand novels published. Insane. Um, he was born in 1911, and he was a war veteran. Um, he was in the Navy in World War II, but unfortunately he was removed for being incapable of command, so they said. Um, and the reasoning behind this was because he had fired at a log that he believed to be a Japanese warship. Um, no one else saw it. There was no proof of it. And he also fired at a Mexican island that turned out to be an ally of the U.S. And that was like their last straw. You know, you're done. Um, so after he left the Navy, he got really into hypnosis. Um, so from the 1930s to the 40s, he was really into hypnosis. And so from here came the, the big novel that started it all, um, Dianetics, which he published in the 50s. Um, Dianetics was pretty much the beginning of Scientology. He didn't have a name for it yet. He didn't, you know, it, it wasn't a religion yet, um, or a, a cult. It was a cult, or it is a cult. Um, but in Dianetics, he explained his auditing sessions. Um, and in these auditing sessions, your goal is to become clear. Um, and to be clear is to be free of triggers, emotional triggers in your life, um, or entities in your body. Um, so what they did is they actually had you, or I keep forgetting that this is actually still happening. Um, they have you hold these metal cans that actually send electrical waves through them that are indetectable, so you can't really feel them. It's actually one third of a polygraph test and they call these machines e-meters. And so in these sessions, you're sitting there holding these cans, speaking to someone right in front of you. You're always looking at them and they're talking to you. And the final goal is to rid you of these emotional triggers in your life um, and to free you of trauma and you'll have no more trauma. So the goal was to free people from their mental health and their mental state. And you're no longer going to have depression. Some man even claimed that it cured his asthma. Don't ask me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, um, so you hold these cans. And what happens is you're speaking to someone. And when an emotional... You know, it, when an emotional feeling comes to your brain, it's going to send the meter up. Um, and depending on, like, how far it goes is how emotional you are. So, talking to someone, and for example, like, if I were having a conversation, this is actually a great example in one of the documentaries that I watched. 
Um, so, talking to them, and they asked, you know, why are you upset today? Oh, I had a, had a fight with my wife. What was it about? Doing the dishes. Okay, you seem more emotional than the dishes. Sorry, there's cat paws under my door. Anyway, um, you seem more emotional than just the dishes. What's going on? Well, you know, it bothered me because my my mother used to speak to me in that tone and so on and so forth. And this person that is pretty much interviewing you um, is getting down to the root of things and trying to like make you clear um, is what they called it. Um, and they're also taking extremely detailed notes on your experiences, your life, what is emotional for you and all that. These sessions were extremely expensive for 24 hours. It was around $500. And they had you sit there for like five, six, seven, eight hours at a time doing these auditing sessions. Um, so you could just become free and enlightened. Um, that wasn't necessarily the religion itself. It's a huge part of the religion. Um, anyone, anyone can really do this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. They actually tried to get it cleared in mainstream, like, you know, modern medicine, but it was, it was denied. It was rejected. They said, no, we're going to stick with our therapy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so in the actual religious part of these auditing and clearing sessions, um, the notes that I mentioned, they were taken to blackmail people. Um, I'm not entirely sure if Ron L. Hubbard's view was to clear people and like help them with their mental health or to back them into a corner. Um, I'm not sure. I can't speak on that. No one really can. He, he didn't disclose that to anyone. Um, he was, he was known to be a generally secretive man. Um, but in the church, there were headquarters and people would live on these headquarters and, and they would work on these headquarters. And the problem with that is that it, Scientology took over their lives or takes over people's lives. <laughs> um, the jobs that these people were working paid extremely poorly. Um, they were making, a woman said that her son was making $30 a week, which is just <laughs> atrocious, especially because these auditing sessions were so expensive, but they were absolutely necessary <laughs> because they needed something to blackmail you with. Um, these, these people were also mandated reporters to the church. So if anyone was speaking poorly, they were to be reported and they were to be punished. The punishments were horrendous. In the later years of Scientology, they were physical, they were abusive, they were very violent. That wasn't Hubbard, as far as I know. It was the new leader, David Miskovich, who came after Hubbard died in 1986. He was very violent. He was very abusive to all of the members. They won't admit that. Only The only reason that we know this is from people's stories after they've left the church. Um... So getting into why it's a religion, because originally it, it wasn't really. His, his view was to help people with their mental health. It wasn't religion. The reason that it is, is because they wanted to be exempt from taxes. So the IRS started taxing them and taxing them and taxing them, obviously, as an organization. And... They started throwing lawsuits at the IRS. And when I say lawsuits, it wasn't just one. It was 
thousands of lawsuits. And it, just, it wasn't just the IRS either. It was individual members at the IRS. Um, how they did that, I don't know. Because they, they had such a, a huge following that they had. I, I think the number was over 2,500 lawsuits filed. So the IRS threw their hands up and said, okay, you're a church, you're a religion, whatever, that's fine. You're exempt from taxes. And there was a huge uproar and celebration, blah, blah, blah. Wow. <laughs> um, so with the violence and abuse in David Miscovich, there were celebrities. And I'm sure many, many people have heard of these celebrities, um, like John Travolta, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise was a huge, like, joystick for them, really. Like, he, he was a toy. He was, he was pretty much recruiting other people um, because he was a huge celebrity. People loved him and all that. Um, but getting into the actual religion and the actual beliefs this comes so late in the video because it actually comes very late in people's enrollment in scientology um you actually learn about these things after you go through many 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 auditing sessions and spend thousands of dollars so what you're doing is climbing the ladder or what they call the bridge and you are trying to clear your soul with these auditing sessions um they actually call the soul the thetan they believe it is immortal and that you feel current and past life traumas because you are immortal um you're being reincarnated constantly and over and over and over again and you feel all of those traumas which is why they have hours upon hours of these auditing sessions because you have so many lives of trauma and you need to be clear from that to become a supreme being um, and once you become that godlike being you're capable of anything anything at all and you just don't know it yet you simply don't know so um climbing the ladder people have said um from being former members of the church that to get past the first level it's going to cost you at least two thousand seven hundred and five hundred dollars no two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars sorry <laughs> Long day at work. Um, and to get to the highest level is over $100,000. Can you imagine that when you're being paid $30 a week? I can't. Um, and the reason why there were so many celebrities in Scientology, or there are, is because they can afford that. Not many people can. And the reason why they're so high up in Scientology is because they can afford that. Um, it's it's just a big old scheme. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> really, they they just they just want your money. They don't want to pay taxes. They want to abuse you and use you, and just keep growing. It's a cult. That's kind of like by the book definition right there. But once. You climb the ladder, and I believe it's level three that you get to, which is past a hundred thousand dollar mark. You're you're there. It's extremely hard to get there. And what they started doing was before you got there, you have to be clear. And people in the church will say, You are clear. But a lot of them are not. Not clear. So you have to go back down at your expense. 
what? No. <laughs> um, I, I'm not entirely sure why people didn't know or understand or see why they weren't a cult. Um, but that is just from an outsider's perspective. A lot of people say that they felt like they were brainwashed. One man who had been in the church for 12 years said that he felt like he was diminished to a being that big and put behind his eyeballs and was watching himself do this for 12 years because it wasn't actually him. People say that they watch their loved ones become a glazed over person of themselves. They're not really them. Um, you can see the dead look in their eyes um, and it's just not pretty. This this organization is or church, I guess. I guess if you want to call it that, I don't. But um, is really horrible. So once you get to that third level, then you get this scripture and this text that was written by Hubbard himself, and it's explaining all this crazy stuff that makes no sense. Which is why you're obviously not going to be given it right when you enter the church because you're going to say, um, hell no, that's not, <laughs> that's insane, that's insane, I'm out. Um, so once you are perfectly brainwashed and dead inside, <laughs> you're given the scripture and a lot of people believe it. So what you're told is that Xenu, billions and billions of years ago, billions of years ago, Xenu was this alien. He was an alien who lived on some outer planet somewhere. And he had a bunch of people. And what he did was he came to planet Earth and dropped all of those people in volcanoes. If this video disappears, <laughs> you know what happened to me. Because this is like top secret information, apparently. Um, and I'm not supposed to know this because I did not spend the hundreds of thousands of, of dollars climbing the ladder or the bridge. Um, <laughs> so, dropped all these people into volcanoes, right? And their thetans, or immortal souls, came up from the volcano and have been swirling the planet ever since. And they're extremely angry. And they have all this trauma from their past lives. And they're super, super, super angry about what Xenu did to them. And what's going on is that they are what what they call infesting our bodies with so they they come into our bodies their soul and they're angry and that is why we need to be cleared it's not just our trauma but it's the sorry something came up on my phone but it's also the trauma from these aliens that were dropped aliens from these people that were dropped into the volcano by this alien Xenu um just let me know when this starts making sense <laughs> because it it didn't make sense to me at all um so when you are being audited in this third level it is said or not exactly just in the third level the entire way through Scientology um, these thetans from the dead people that Xenu dropped in the volcanoes when volcanoes weren't there billions of years ago in the scriptures when it says that he dropped these people into volcanoes. The timelines don't match up. 
there were no volcanoes. Anyways. Or people. Or aliens. As far as I know. But, um, it is said that these thetans that infest our bodies can make us extremely ill. Physically ill. And they can make us overcome with emotion. Not just ours, but theirs as well. And I believe that by them saying that, oh, it's these thetans that are making you ill. <laughs> it's their excuse for getting you sick, making you sick. Um, a woman was being punished and um, she was brought to this facility where she had to work and scrub toilets with a toothbrush while pregnant. Her child was being taken care of on one of these sites and the child was so sick that she had to escape. That was her last straw. Um, she knew that she could handle it herself, but she didn't want to put her child through that. So she was done. There are so many incredible stories out there. Um, and it's all like free access, but I think, I think that is the end of, end of my spiel. Um, there aren't necessarily many, they don't really have a god. Their, their being is Xenu, and he's evil. I guess their, their godlike figure is Hubbard and David. They have leaders, they don't have gods. Um, but their being that they can't see that's supernatural is Xenu. Even though he's an alien. And I guess their supernatural being is Thetans. But that's really just your soul. Um, yeah. That is... That is the end of my my lecture. Don't don't get into Scientology. No matter what anyone tells you, if if you're having a hard time, seek out therapy, seek out help. Just don't go get audited or cleared. That would be that would be bad. Um, I was actually just talking to my coworker about it, and I explained auditing, and she goes, "I feel like that would be very helpful." And I said, "You have no idea, sister." <laughs> But yeah, I will, I will post my, my works cited page probably after this. I might make two posts. I don't know how to put them together, but I hope this week was well for you all. Anyways, that is the end of my video. Goodbye.